Shalom, beloved. A word. This speaks of the past covenant, which highlights the current covenant, which tells us of our future walking in the covenant. In order to do what came to me, I'm going to move throughout and bring it together. So just bear with me. I'm going to give it to you the way the spirit gave it to me. And according to the word of Yahuwah, may his spirit touch your spirit that the oracles of life be open unto you, that you receive the word in clarity and understanding. May he give us all revelation, understanding, revelation, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and make it plain as these words of life are spoken. May he bless us in his spirit with all spiritual knowledge. And as we give him praise, honor, and glory, we receive it this day, glorifying him evermore. In the name of Yeshua, his word, amen. I'm going to start in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, at the ninth verse. Okay, we're in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, at the ninth verse. And he said unto me, take a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he take unto him all these, Abraham is doing this, and divided them in the midst, and laid them each one piece against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And the Yah said unto Abraham, know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom thou shalt serve will I judge, and afterward, they shall come out with great substance. Now, beloved, I want to go into the book of Ezekiel, to the Valley of Dry Bones. In the last verse, I have multiple books open as I am sharing with you, so be a little patient with me. We're in the book of Ezekiel, okay? In order for the spirit to move, Yah always sends his prophets. He sends his prophets to speak his word into the atmosphere, to bring the eternal into the present. He always has his prophets speaking. Just as it was then, so is it now. That's why we hear a lot of the servants of the Most High prophesying unto us because his word is going out. The Ruach of his word is what the prophets are activating. When we look at Ezekiel, okay, and he's in the Valley of Dry Bones, and I'm gonna move around. Then said he unto me, this is, this is Ezekiel talk, talking, prophesy unto the spirit. Many books say the wind, but it is the Ruach that he is talking about. Prophesy unto the spirit, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the spirit, thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesy as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. When you look at cut off, just as he had made that covenant with Abraham, and Abraham was in a deep sleep when the spirit of the Lord moved throughout. We know according to scripture that many times when it talks about a deep sleep, it can also reference death, that they were sleeping. It will reference death, okay? Um, I'm saying this because Yasharel 
in being represented in the grave, they are in a deep sleep when the spirit of the Lord is moving throughout. Referencing back to the covenant he made with Abraham, so powerful that our father Abraham was in a deep sleep when the spirit of the Lord was moving throughout those pieces and that offering that he had laid out. We see Yasharel. Yasharel is in the grave. They are dead. They are cut off until the word of the Lord, the spirit comes through and speaks to them. As the spirit of the Lord is speaking, even in the days of Abraham, speaking of that 400 years, and that spirit is moving throughout. Abraham is in a deep sleep, sleep like an unto death, a deep sleep, just as Yasharel is in a deep sleep. How do we know how deep the sleep is? We can reference it, beloved, when we go into the book of Romans, and we're in the 11th chapter. Bear with me because it's in my head, but I want to quote it correctly, so I'm moving throughout multiple books. We are in the 11th chapter, and we're talking about Yasharel, comparing them to that covenant going in force, okay? Now, as that covenant is moving, we are in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 8. Yah have given unto them a spirit of slumber, their sleep, just like they are in that valley of dry bones, just like Abraham was in that deep sleep, knowing nothing. They are in that valley as we have been scattered all over the world in a deep sleep, which fell upon us. Now I'm in the book of Romans chapter 11, verse eight. Yah have given them a spirit of slumber, Eyes that should not see, ears that should not hear. And well, because of unbelief, they are broken off. Okay, now when we look in the book of Ezekiel and Yasharel is awakened, okay, he's, Israel is talking. Forgive me, I'm moving throughout so many books. You got to bear with me. It's in my head, but I want to quote it correctly so that you can follow. I'm moving between books. I'm in the book of Ezekiel now, starting at the 11th verse, chapter 7, chapter 37. Then said he unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry, dry because there is no word upon them. And our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. When they talk about cut off, beloved, they are referencing the Hebrew word karath. To many, it may be pronounced differently. I'm going to use the term karath, okay, to cut off. All right. It also means a seal, a sign, or to covenant, to covenant, okay? They are cut off just like in the time of Abraham when that covenant was moving throughout. They are cut. That covenant is still moving and in force upon them. Even the words that Yahuwah told Abraham, he said unto Abraham, know for a surety, that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years, okay? Why? Because all of the covenants are in force. What Yahuwah told Yasharel about the blessing and the curse, it is in force. He's telling Abraham, by making that covenant, through that covenant, he's telling him what will happen. It doesn't mean the covenant will be broken. But in that 400 years, there is a form of a deep sleep that falls upon Yasharel. When you look at cut off, actually, the word even has a picture. It is 
when you look at portions of it, there's a picture of the palm of a hand, picture of a head, and a picture of a cross, a wooden cross, a seal, a sign to cut a covenant, okay? It also represents to cut off. You have figurative, you have literal. Yahuwah is, his word is pregnant. It does not have one dimension, although you can understand how it applies in both cases. He made this covenant with Abraham while Abraham was in a deep sleep. Yasharel, as he's speaking his word over them, that covenant going in force, what covenant? Yahuwah meant it so well that when, yeah, when Israel thought that he would forget them, they were cut off. He told them, I have graven you on the palms of my hands. Thy walls are ever before me, thy protection. The true Jerusalem is ever before me. I cannot forget you. Now we see that covenant in force yet again when he's amongst those dry bones, that covenant that he made with Abraham, with those dead animals, those carcasses while Abraham was in a deep sleep. Yasharel, a slumber of sorts has come upon Yasharel. They are cut off. They are cut just like they're representing something dead, something severed just as those animals were when the spirit of the Lord's word is moving through, he's speaking through his prophet because this covenant, this power of his spirit is so great. Man, the true Abraham doesn't witness it. This is a covenant so great. It's Yah that's doing it. Now we see him doing it again in that valley of dry bones, but he's using the prophet Ezekiel, beloved. We also know, forgive me because once again, I'm moving throughout. I want to read where he tells them, I'm in the book of Isaiah chapter 49 at the 16th verse. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palm of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. It's that covenant that cutting it is still in force okay when he tells abraham on the 14th verse we are moving throughout the book of genesis chapter 15 now we're in the 14th verse that you're looking at and also that nation what nation the nation that took Yasharel, though that nation is a group of people, that nation is not located in one place. That nation is spread throughout the four corners, but that nation is very distinct. That group of people that Yasharel has been imprisoned under. And also that nation whom thou shall serve will I judge, that nation. You see, it's a very distinct group of people that do these things. And afterwards, they shall come out with great substance. He's talking about Yasharel, all right? Now, when he's talking about that nation, the nation that Yasharel so serve, when he begins to wake us up, bring us out of our graves, out of our deep sleep and slumber, awaken to who we are and to whom we belong, that judgment is also upon those nations, beloved. He said, that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Now, when we go into the book of Isaiah chapter 49, starting at the 25th verse, but thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. And I will contend with him that hath contended with thee, and I will save thy children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am 
thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Let me keep going as I, I get it or as I got it, beloved. When we are in the book of Ezekiel, okay, and we're talking about that valley of dry bones and we're in a particular section, forgive me, I've got multiple books open because I don't want to share it with just my words. I want to read it complete as I go. When we are in the valley of dry bones and he's talking to those bones and they are awakened and they are saying we are cut off for our parts is hearkening back. Even as they speak, it's touching on a covenant, the same kind of covenant that was made with Abraham. I'm in the wrong book. I'm trying to get to Ezekiel. I'm still in Isaiah. Wait a minute. I'm in Ezekiel, 30, Isaiah 37. I wanted Ezekiel 37. Okay. We have to understand there is a slumber, a deep slumber that's happened unto Yasharel so great. It is as though we are dead because we are separated. We are dry, but now we are waking up, beloved. This is what he is telling you. And the signs are there when he turns on those other nation on that nation, beloved. This is the spirit of the Lord doing this. I want to go and reference one time, one more time. I'm going into the book of Ezekiel. I'm in the 12th verse. Behold, oh my people, I will open your grave. So we know it is Yahuwah that's bringing us back from this state of deadness, this, this system that does not teach life, speak life, guide us into the qualities of life or the good things that we should do. All we have to do is look at the television and the shows and the things in these societies that teach evil, wickedness, sorcery, witchcraft, homosexuality. It teaches abominations, if you will. Their conscience is seared when it comes to doing evil, who that nation, the nation Yahuwah is going to judge, beloved. Behold, oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your grave. We have been among dead things, beloved. We have been living among dead things, but that word of life has come in and the spirit of the Lord is there. He has chosen to do it. He is remembering his covenant. Remember, we are graven on the palms of his hands, our walls, our protection, what he said, that covenant is ever before him. Let me finish. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Yasharel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your grace and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. Yes, that deep sleep is upon us. And the book of Romans chapter 11 supports it when he says, and I'm at verse eight and I'm going to move around. Yah has given them a spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see, ears that should not hear unto this day, just as one that is dead, who sees nothing, knows nothing, hears nothing. Okay, but as we continue, beloved, when we get to verse 20, I'm in the book of Romans chapter 11. Well, because of unbelief, why did this happen? Because of unbelief when Yasharel did not listen, when Yasharel went into 400 years of bondage because they did not, we did not, our ancestors did not believe, beloved, unbelief, okay, we were broken off. That's why our bones were scattered. We were cut off, okay, and thou standest by faith. He's talking to the Gentiles. Okay, because of unbelief, they're wondering, well, what happened to Yasharel? They're supposed to be the people of the Lord. Well, because of unbelief, this thing has come upon them. Wait a minute. Now I'm going to go to verse 27. 
But when, uh, wait a minute, am I going to go? No, 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 no. Okay. Verse 25, forgive me. I'm still in the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened in Yashorel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sakes. I'm going to go back up to verse 27. I'm in book of Romans chapter 11. And for this, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. How can our sins be taken away? When the word of the most high is spoken over us, we are clean through and through, just like Jesus told, yes, Yeshua told his apostles, you are clean through my word. That's why when Ezekiel gets to the valley of dry bones, those bones are dry. Their hope is lost because they've been amongst dead things. We amongst these nations, these nations that speak dead words, these nations that still kill, rob, and destroy, they are dead things, twice dead. Dead because they do not have the word of life in them. Dead because when they get the judgment, the final death will come. Dead things. We've been living in a graveyard, so to speak. But the spirit of the Lord is coming. He's going to speak it. He is speaking it through his prophets. And how did we get there? That deep sleep, that deep sleep that he put on Abraham when he started the covenant, that deep sleep when he told the prophets prophesy to that valley of dry bones. Yahuwah has his prophets prophesying the word of the most high, waking us up, giving us true light. Okay, his word is spirit and life. Okay, true life, true life. When he told the spirit to go into them and he breathed on those bones and they stood up in it, seating in great army. But why were they in the valley of dry bones? Because they were in a deep sleep. They saw not, they heard not. Just like a person who is dead. When the Bible references people who have died, it also references them as being asleep. But we also know it is representative of not knowing what is going on in the spirit. Just like Abraham, the power of the Lord was moving throughout so great. He put a deep sleep upon Abraham. You're talking about a sleep so deep that many people would call it likened unto being dead. When you reference how prophets, when the spirit of the Lord speaks through prophets, many of them, the spirit speaks through them and they do not breathe. The spirit is breathing through them a deep sleep. Even when their eyes are open and they have visions and go into trances, as far as knowing what is going on in this earthly realm, they're gone. They go into a, another realm, but Abraham went into a deep sleep, a sleep that many could liken unto death. Yasharel went into a deep sleep, but the covenant, beloved, is moving. That covenant has caused us to come out of our graves. That covenant is enforced so greatly mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that even now we have stood up a great army. Why? Because those words of life, spirit and life have come upon us. And when we concern ourselves or question what is going to happen to that nation, we can see it in force. It is already coming to life. I'm in the book of Isaiah. I'm going into chapter 49. Bear with me, beloved, as I give you this uh, forgive me because once again, as I said earlier, I got a lot of books. Okay, a lot of books. I wanted to say it where you could follow in scripture, even if you play this again, to follow because I'm trying to give it as I got it. Chapter 49, book of Isaiah. 
but I'm going to what he said in chapter 15, verse 14, when he told Abraham, I'm going to start at the 13th voice first. And he said unto Abraham, know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them, give them harsh treatment, murderous treatment, lying treatment, rob, steal, kill and destroy, afflicted treatment for 400 years. And also that nation, what nation? that nation, that nation has a distinct look, no matter where you find them on the four corners of the earth. And that nation whom they shall serve, hmm, will I judge. And afterwards, they who, Yasharel, shall come forth with great substance. You see, many people talk about reparations, and I'm all for reparations, but you see, there's a reparation coming, beloved. Just as it occurred in the exodus of the first Egypt, there's a reparation coming. Yahuwah knows about reparations too. And you see, we shall come forth with great substance. Oh, yes, they may say no, but Yahuwah already said, yes, there will be reparations, beloved, even if they don't want to do it, we will gain great favor in the eyes of man and Yahuwah. They will recognize his power, his authority, and they will have great fear for him, understanding who we are and who he is, and we will get great substance, although some people might call it great reparations, beloved. This too shall happen. I'm going to end. I'm in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. I'm starting at the 25th verse. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. We got to do the gone, gone with the bye, bye, with the don't want to see you no more. All right. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. See, Yahuwah stepped up. So, oh, you want to pick on them? Well, I'm going to deal with you. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I will save thy children, Yasharel, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord am thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob, that covenant, beloved. They're speaking of the covenant in Genesis 15 when it started with Abraham and he was in a deep sleep. They're talking about that same covenant in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 when Yasharel was in a deep sleep like an unto death. We were in a graveyard, so to speak, uh, amongst the dead, because they were not honoring the Lord. They were not using his words, teaching it, keeping it. No, no, no. We were truly in a valley of dry bone. Why? Our bones were dried. Our hope was lost. We were living in the valley of the shadow of death, so to speak. All right. But that word, that word, while we were in a deep sleep, a sleep so deep, it was likened unto death. When we were in that sleep, that covenant was moving. That same powerful spirit and covenant was speaking over those bones, raising us back up. Just like with Abraham, when he went into that deep sleep and that cut off, that word caress, that cut off. Yes, it's a twofold. Yes, we were cut off from our creator, or so we felt we were in the land of the dead, so to speak. However, that word also means covenant, beloved. That covenant was in force. That's why when we go into the book of Romans, chapter 11, we see where Yasharel was in a deep sleep until the fullness of the Gentiles should come in. But you see, if we got in that situation, it's telling the story. How did it all happen? Well, unbelief. But once we hear, once we believe because of the 
covenant that he made with the fathers, Yasharel shall be saved. Beloved, it's a word. If it came through with multiples, I was trying to bring it all together. May the word of the Most High bless you and keep you. May it enrich you and feed you through the spirit of life itself. May he be blessed, praised, glorified, and honored at all times. For he is the one that cleanses us. How will the Most High clean us? It is through his word that he will cleanse us. Beloved, Yeshua tells us so. There is a cleansing that we have. And we want to thank you and praise you, honor you this day, Father. For we are awakened. Our eyes are open. The world may walk around and say, we woke. They got this new thing because they want to copy this thing. But this thing is real where we have awakened, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. We have awakened. We are no longer slumbering. We are not, even if we see the graveyard, we know the spirit and the word of life. That's why we are standing on our feet. And that same covenant that he made when Abraham was in a deep sleep, that covenant ran through when Yasharel was in her deep sleep and the prophet prophesied over those dry bones, just as Yahuwah has prophets prophesying now over the dry bones, and they stand up because of the covenant. And that nation, what nation? That nation. That nation that has a very distinct look. Yes, yes, yes. Whom we shall serve? Mm -hmm. Yahuwah is judging. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, we, we come out with reparations. He said great substance. So whether they say yes or no, it's a yes and an amen. It is already done in the eternal. And if we live to see it, it shall come forth in the now. Whether we be on this side or the other, his word shall come forth. Shalom, beloved. It is a word. Shalom.